Good day. We are going to discuss one of the tool in financial statement analysis, and it will be liquidity ratios. So let's review our tipos for financial statement analysis okay and the different concerns so if it is tipos of fsa what are our tools it would be ratio what else it will be vertical analysis your horizontal analysis your trend analysis and gross profit variation. So you have five tools. The input will be financial statements. The process will be financial statement analysis. Your output will always be decisions. And you have to store your financial statement and that of your financial report. Now. Do you know the difference between financial statement and financial report? This one would include your tools, all the ratios, no? Now, what is the other term for vertical analysis? It is common size financial statement. And what is the other term for horizontal analysis? It is a comparative statement, you see? So both are CS. Uh, the, so uh, let's start with the ratios. And if it is ratio analysis, how many do we have? We will start with liquidity. And then after that, we look into profitability. After profitability, we'll go to solvency. Why are we going to start with these three? These are indicators of effectiveness. And then we have efficiency ratio, okay? And then you have the market valuation ratio. We know that effectiveness plus efficiency, that is the achievement of the goal. Now, what type of goal? Internal. What is again our internal goal? That is maximize profitability and you have to be able to maximize your sources of funds. Okay? Aside from being stable and strong. Now, why do we have number five? Because you have the goal of maximizing shareholders. Well, okay, so that's our view with regards to ratio. So let's start with liquidity. If it is liquidity, the first thing, the input is financial statement. So we have to look at the balance sheet. And what is liquidity? Liquidity would talk about short term. And if it is short term, then that would be current asset, current liability. Okay, so you just have to look at your balance sheet. And what is the other ratio? Or what are the ratios? But first, we need to look at the output. The output of liquidity ratio can be peso or percent. Okay? So this is sometimes um, not fully utilized, but instead it is number of times or peso. Okay. Now we start with because you have current asset and current liability. Dito the adage that you would you would apply would be. Divide and conquer. 
Okay? Why? Because FSA would actually guide you. Guide. In asking the right question. Okay? The ratios would not really tell you that you are really in, it's it's not telling you that you are good or you are bad but it will just focus on the why in order for you to be able to ask the right question and be able to get appropriate answer that could um affect the decision that you have to make and with that in mind so let's take a look first Okay, so since short term, so that would be current ratio. So divide and conquer, so that would be current asset by by current liability. The question would be, if I have two, if I have one, and I have 0.5 as my answer, how would I know if uh, somehow my performance uh, is at par, and then I can ask the financial managers, why is that so? Okay. Now, for you to be able to evaluate, you know, when you evaluate, your options would be inter or intra analysis. Okay. In CLSU, we have intramural. So, that is, uh, when you say intra, that is within the school. So it is the firm versus the firm. <laughs> your own firm. Okay, you're comparing yourself with yourself. Okay? <clears throat> but when you say inter, then you're looking at the other firm. You're looking at the industry. Here, you're only looking at yourself, comparing yourself with yourself, with other periods. Okay, you, you compare yourself with other periods. Okay. And the good thing is that if you are listed, these are normally um, published, no? So you can compare. Okay. So let's go to two. So if it is peso, what does it mean? You have two pesos of your current asset available to settle for your obligation. Because your concern here is, do I have enough money to pay for my short-term obligation? Do remember that creditors are quite demanding as a, as, a, as a partner, no? So you have two pesos for every one peso. And then with one... Or do you have one peso for one peso current asset, no? To settle for your current one peso current liability. And you point five, then you have 50 cents current asset to pay for your one peso current liability. <clears throat> now, of course, at a first look, it seems two is much better than one or point five. Um, you have to compare it with the industry average and the type of organization that you are in. Because if you are, let's say, your product is regularly demanded, then you have to be very liquid. It's not enough that you have 1 or 0.5. It should be higher than 1 because you are, your product is regularly demanded. But if, let's say, your product is um, a fad, usulang, then... The, the, your liquidity in terms of current ratio would not necessarily require two. Or if you take a look at the industry, because say, for example, the industry is 0. 0.8. One and two is higher than 0. 0.8. Okay, so you perform, because you perform uh, somehow, uh, much better than the industry, the other players. Okay, the good thing with the industry averages is it will, it will tell you how you 
play or how you perform with the other entities within the same industry. Okay? So, let's go to the next one. By the way, there are other terms, no? Uh, for for liquidity ratio. And the other term for liquidity ratio will be short term solvency. Okay? Now, you have quick ratio. Siempre quick ratio will be quick asset. And then you have current liability. Okay? Now, mom, I mean quick. What is quick? Quick would be how many steps do you need to take for your current asset will be cash. And take a look at your current asset. You have cash, you have marketable security, you have receivable, inventory, and prepayments. Repayments will never be converted to cash. You should already paid in advance. This one is two steps away because normally inventories will be sold on a credit basis. Very seldom would firms have all cash as their sales. And the receivable will be one step away. Marketable security will one step away. So you have three items included in your current asset. These are cash, marketable security, and receivable, okay? And it would be, it would have the same interpretation as your current asset, okay? Two pesos, one peso, 0.5. But of course, since your current asset is much higher than your quick asset, your result in quick asset will be lower than your current asset, okay? And if, if let's say, you have here a current asset of, uh, let's say, 1.5, and you have here 0. 0.8, and you have here no? 0. 0.4, what does it mean? Again, you just have to say that for every one peso of liability or obligation, you have one peso and 50 cents to pay for it if you're really being demanded no, uh, to pay for your obligation from your current asset. Right? Because you would like to be self-sufficient. Is your asset, current asset, are mostly directed to your operating activities? Only the marketable security will be related to your investing activities, okay? And then you have the cash ratio. And cash ratio would be cash plus cash equivalent plus marketable security divided by current liability. There are cash ratio formula that cash plus cash equivalent divided by current liability. This one is much preferred. If you are looking at the urgency to settle obligation, no? And because your cash ratio, ano siya? Ito yung pinaka conservative sa tatlo. Why it is conservative? Because if, if uh, the creditor demanded immediate payment, this is the only available amount that you can give to your creditor. Okay, and uh, what else would be the interpretation aside from sign of peso? It would be twice, once. No? So, madalas mas ginagamit ang number of times at saka peso says. Okay, then, so, what is the fourth one? We have working capital. And working capital is current asset less current liability. And ito talaga sign of peso lang. Unlike the current ratio and the quick ratio and the cash ratio, it would give you number of times, not only pesos. Okay? And uh, if it is working capital, what does it mean? This is the funds that would be available for your operations. Okay, so what we uh, have with working capital would be funds available for 
operation. Then what about defensive interval ratio? Okay. The defensive interval ratio would, would look at the average expenditure and it would look at your quick asset, although there are other formulas or other formula aside from this, okay? And what does this indicate when you have the answer for defensive interval? It would tell you uh, up to what point would your resources would support your expenditure. Remember expenditure, when you use the word expenditure, this is cash outlay. Okay? So a good indicator to determine if there is a need for us to... Uh, I'm not need, but uh, if there are, there is a need for us to focus on external sources of fund, would be a defensive internal ratio. Okay. Now, these five ratios are most commonly used. You know? later we would include a ratio that would somehow be. Uh, very seldomly used, but important also in risk assessment. So all in all, what do we look at if it is your liquidity ratio? Liquidity ratio, you focus on your capacity. Capacity with what? To settle your short-term obligation. The basic ruling would be, basic ruling, because this is liquidity, we would like it to be high. No? Although other issues would be, you need to take a look at your inventory level. Because if your inventory level is quite significant with your current asset, then there would be concern with your liquidity. Because you cannot convert it outright to cash if the partner that you do have is quite demanding okay so we what's what's more important is you know how to interpret so liquidity should also be uh look into with the profitability with the solvency and efficiency okay lahat yan pag meron na tayong sinol. And we need to uh, also include the other tools. So, so all the five tools you have to combine when you interpret. But here, our concern would be, do you have enough funds to settle for all your obligation? So again, it is about the balance sheet. Look at the current asset. And look at the current liability because only the defensive interval ratio no, is not using the item from current asset and current liability. Siyempre naman, in every rule, there is an exemption. But if it is liquidity, you just have to look at your current asset and current liability most often. Okay? So, uh, thank you for listening. Let's uh, have a computation on our next material. Good day.